you know, you go bit past that organized, distorted doctrine, as you like to refer to it as, and I love that term, by the way. Um, you go past that, and you get to um, the New Age movement. You know, th- th- this is postured, it is positioned as real spirituality, but it's not. It's this religion that is still holding people back from getting to the gold at the end of that spiritual path. And what researchers have called it is a cul-de-sac. It's a little circular driveway, you know, and people go, instead of taking the straight path, they go into the, the, the side channel on the, on the right-hand side, and that takes them around in a circle, and they keep going around in this circle like a hamster on a wheel. And they never come out of that circle. It's a nice little trap that's positioned just before the gold mine that lies a little further down the path. But these people think, oh, I'm on the path. You know, I'm going and going and going. But they're going around in a circle. This is the, the allegory or the little, you know, kind of uh, symbol that I like to give people to describe what is the New Age movement? What is it acting as? It's that cul-de-sac that's keeping people from going further down the path of real spirituality. And so they think they're enlightened in that place, and they never really get to the real deal. They, it's, again, it's a, it's a simulation. It is a, a, a forgery. It's a fake version. It's, it's a picture of the real thing that's being handed to somebody as the real thing, but it's not the real thing. Okay, So how are people taken off this path? Let's look at some of the deceptions that are involved. And they're subtle. Many of them are very subtle. Okay, It's not like they're just blatantly throwing you a bunch of lies that are transparent. If that were the case, so many people wouldn't have fallen for this religion. Okay, So if they're subtle deceptions, and they have rationales for the deceptions. We need to understand why these deceptions are so um, uh, insidious in their subtlety. Okay, that how they hold people back from developing true, what I call streetwise spirituality. And before I even get to some of these, one of the main things that absolutely, invariably, I find in common with people who have subscribed to the New Age religion is this. None of them, all, I would say almost zero. Now, now, that's not a blanket statement because there are some here and there, but there are so few and far between that it's almost laughable, okay? Almost all the people who buy into this religion have zero understanding of what occultism really is. They don't understand the occult. They, they are looking into these things from a perspective of feel-good spirituality, but they don't understand that occult knowledge is a two-edged blade, that there is a positive side to incorporating that knowledge into one's being. And then this tool, which is a, a body of knowledge, okay, can be used for the opposite purpose other than spiritual enlightenment and uplift of human beings. It can be used as a weapon, and it can be used to keep people in a state of slavery. This is what I've traditionally referred to as the dark occult. Okay, It's a way of using occulted knowledge to hold people in chains, in bondage, in slavery. It's mind control techniques. It's understanding how certain aspects of the human psyche work so you can twist and manipulate people with that knowledge if they already happen to be in ignorance of it. If you're in deep knowledge of how a component of the psyche works and other people are in total ignorance of how that knowledge and how their emotional makeup work. Okay, you could do a number on them. And just as a brief example to this dynamic, and this is again to speak to the naivete of the New Age community. It is a very naive community. It's a very, uh, I, I want to stop short of using the word childish, but it is childlike in its understanding. It's not streetwise. It's a very naive spiritual approach. And again, I'm just going to say that. I don't care who it offends. If you want to get offended by that, go right ahead and get offended by that. I'm here to speak the truth, not make friends with people. Okay? I'm trying to explain to them how they're subtly being deceived and they need to really wake up to a new level of understanding and become streetwise about what's going on. Okay, that's the approach that it's going to take to get us out of this slavery that we're in. All right, so let me just give you a, a very um, brief example of this. Okay, in the 2008 elections, when Barack Obama was running for president, his team of handlers, and yes, the president does have a team of handlers, okay, came up with a very insidious but brilliant technique using 
neuro-linguistic programming and playing off of deep understanding of the human psyche and the human motivation to want to elect a leader that is compassionate and knowledgeable. And here's how they did this, okay? And people can look this up online. You can go to uh, YouTube and you can understand. Whenever people ask me who really have no understanding of what the occult is or specifically what the dark occult is, I always try to give them this example as a starting point to understand mind control manipulation techniques through dark occult knowledge. Okay? Uh, if you go to YouTube and you type in Obama's fainting women or Obama's fainting ladies or just Obama and fainting on the campaign trail or, you know, Obama fainting campaign, okay? If you type in something similar to those, that search term in YouTube, you will get these videos, okay? And I also have these videos downloaded offline. Whenever I find a video, just as a little side note, whenever I find a video that is very uh, useful and demonstrates what's going on in the world, and I feel people would be of uh, benefit to understand it, I don't trust it's going to be up on YouTube forever, or I don't trust it's going to be up on Vimeo forever, or whatever other website. I download that to my computer. Downloading videos and understanding how to do it is so crucially important. You need to make an offline archive backup of important videos, not just expecting it to be there forever. YouTube gets censored. A lot of these tube sites, they get censored. You know, something goes up there, somebody doesn't want somebody to see, and I guarantee they go right to YouTube's management, pay them whatever they want. They'll say, oh, I'll take it down and claim copyright infringement or whatever. You know, that happens constantly. You need to download stuff that is important and store it offline as if the cloud isn't going to be there tomorrow because, hey, it may not. Okay, so that, just as a side note, I wanted to say that. To go back to this, uh, the, the people who handle Obama and his administration, it, they, they practice a technique that was basically a mind control technique, dark occult mind control programming. Okay, And it's done through NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, speech patterns, speech techniques, and also gestures and symbols are used in this technique. And it's a prime example of what dark occultism is. Again, whenever people who have no knowledge of the occult ask me, what is the occult? How does it work? Sp meaning, what is the manipulatory tactics of the occult? Okay, the dark occult. I always send them the videos like this to watch, and I say, just watch this and understand what they did. And you'll know what the dark occult is. That's what it really is. It's the manipulation of, human, of the human psyche. Because certain people are in high knowledge of how it works, and other people are in deep ignorance of how it works. And that creates, a through that knowledge differential, that creates a tremendous power differential. So um, watch these videos, Obama's fainting ladies or women, or campaign fainting, or you know whatever term you find it under. You'll find it if you do that search. Okay, And what they did is they, they took a woman to every campaign speech that Obama did during the 2008 campaign trail, and they had her pretend to faint in the audience at almost every one of his speeches. The same thing happens in the middle of the speech. He's starting to talk about or something or make a promise that he's going to deliver if he's elected president, and a woman in the crowd faints out of nowhere. Okay, so other people, you know, she swoons and faints and other people are all gathered around her. Oh, my God, what happened? She passed out. They're making a little bit of a disturbance. And Obama snaps into action and he immediately sees, you know, it always happens somewhere in front of his vision. Okay, and he points it out immediately and he says, do we have someone who's sick over here? Did someone uh, feel faint? Okay, and did they pass out? Is that what I'm seeing? You know, so he you, you, the, the perception is, wow, this guy's very attentive. He's paying attention. You know, he cares. There's so much care here. He stopped his speech. He didn't just continue. He stopped and he pointed it out and he's concerned. You see how subtle this deception is? And it's the same thing played over and over again to put these ideas. And this is how you embed an idea. It's an embe embedding it through a psychodrama. So the psychodrama is playing out live, and you're embedding in all these notions. He's attentive. He's knowledgeable. He's looking out for us. He sees what other people don't right away. He cares, immediately cares. He stopped his speech. This is more important than anything he was doing. Okay, you see how it works? 
Okay? And he points it out, and he knows what to do. That's the next part. He knows what it is. How does he know she didn't just have a massive brain aneurysm and is brain dead now? That could easily have happened. How do you know her aorta, she had a weak heart and her aorta, aorta burst and had a gigantic massive heart attack and, and you know needs to be rushed for open heart surgery or something? How would he know what the – he immediately makes a diagnosis as if he knows exactly what happened. You know, So he says she just probably feels faint. And she, you, you need to make space for her. So he knows what happened, and he knows what to do. Make some space. The EMTs are on their way. Help is on the way. And now she needs some water. Now here's where the symbolism comes in. Water. It's a symbol of the spirit. It's a symbol of care. It's a symbol of the feminine. Okay? The birth, our water, the mother figure, the sacred feminine energy. Okay? The, the chalice. Okay? The grail figure the water okay our spiritual waters it's our care so now he hands his own water he had a bottle at the platform the speaking podium and he takes his water that he was going to use if he got parched during his speech and he gives her he says give her this give her my water see there's that spiritual symbology embedded placed into the psychodrama all fake all thought up long beforehand and repeated over and over and over and over. And luckily, people caught on to this and they made these videos that show the pattern. Where it ha No matter what temperature it is, no matter how many people there are, that, none of that matters. It's the same woman feigning over and over and over again the same way, almost at the same time during these speeches. And he plays out the exact same thing like a well-trained actor every time. And somebody's going to tell me, they're going to tell other people... How naive would you have to believe, be to believe that's not set up? I mean, I mean, re ser seriously, you're the greatest. I would say that's crazier. If you believe that, that is crazier than any of the wildest, wackiest, nuttiest conspiracy theories that have ever been brought up by anybody that make absolutely no sense, that are actually like put out there to make the legitimate conspiracy uncovery movement look bad. Okay, that is way crazier to believe that that's a coincidence than the, the the strangest, craziest conspiracies you have ever, ever, ever heard. Okay, you have to be the most naive human being to believe that that's just a coincidence, and it happened constantly at every place Obama visited on the campaign trail, over and over again, and he played it out in the exact same way, like a good actor that he is. Okay, to believe that that's coincidence. All I can say is anybody who believes that, you're a psychological infant. A psychological infant. And there's no help for you. There's no hope for you if that's what you believe after watching that video. I would, I would feel, if somebody watched the, these videos and they said to me there's nothing to that, I would say, my God, I feel so sorry for you that I really hope you get help. Like, I really hope you get psychological help very soon because you're very, very, very sick. Very ill, mentally ill. Okay, that's all. And that's how positive I am that this is a deliberate, orchestrated effort using known occult techniques, dark occult NLP techniques. Okay, and, and again, this information about NLP and you know psychodrama and things like that—that's all stuff that can be used in a positive sense too. It doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean these are bad things. They're being used in a bad way. They're tools. They can be used in a positive way. They can be used in a negative way. Okay, this is a dark occult way of using these tools about the knowledge of the human psyche and human motivations. So that's out there for anyone who wants to research it. But again, the, the context I'm bringing this up in is in relation to the New Age movement and their ignorance of the dark occult. They have no idea what occultism is really, let alone what dark occultism is. They don't know how it works. They're very unresearched in this. They're unread in it. Okay, And most of all, and this brings us to New Age deception number one, Okay, they ignore it. They ignore it. That's the most important thing here. New Age deception number one is, if it's negative, ignore it. If it makes me feel uncomfortable, ignore it. If it's something that's really dark and foreboding, doesn't matter whether I really need to know about it because it directly affects me. No, no, no. If it's negative, ignore it. Now, let me tell you what this is. 
This is the most surefire way to ensure that the negativity and the chaotic effects of that negative uh, uh, behavior or situation. It's the most surefire way to ensure that those negative effects continue. To ignore the negative, you are ensuring that the negative and chaos continues. 